Hi, I'm Laurel, and in this video, I will be talking about clustering. This is the first video in a multi-part series on clustering algorithms. Before I start to get into specific algorithms that are used in cluster analysis, I want to talk a bit about what cluster analysis actually is. When we analyze clusters, we're trying to divide data into groups. We may be trying to capture meaning of the data, or just prepare the data to be used in some other process. For this video, and the others in this series, I'm creating my data points along a two-dimensional plane, with data points that are nearer to each other being more similar. Clusters can be formed in different ways, depending on the nature of the data and the needs of the users. Ideally, objects within the same cluster are related to each other and dissimilar to objects in other clusters. The more this is true, the better the clustering. This can mean that there are many different ways of clustering the same data. For example, a group of data like this can be easily separated visually into two distinct clusters. However, it would be just as valid to further subdivide it into four separate clusters instead. Or it may be that even smaller clusters are appropriate and we create six clusters. Now that we've spent a moment talking about what clustering is, we need to discuss different types of clustering. A common and important distinction between types of clustering is whether they are hierarchical or partitional. Sometimes they are referred to as being either nested or unnested clusterings. Let me show you what I mean with an example. First, I'm going to show what they would look like with partitioned clustering. Partitioning is simply dividing the data into non-overlapping subsets. Each data object belongs to one and only one subset, and there is no overlapping between the subsets. As you can see in the image, each grouping is completely distinct. Hierarchical, or nested, partitioning is rather different. We can imagine a hierarchical clustering as a tree. The root represents all objects. All other clusters, other than the leaves, represent the union of their children. We have a set of groups and subgroups. First, we start off with the group of all objects. This is the root of our tree. We then split that into subgroupings. In this case, we're making two separate subclusters. However, you could use three, four, a dozen, it depends on the data. From there, we continue to split the clusters into even more subclusters. As you can see, these two new clusters that I have just created are formed from the original larger cluster. We do the same with the, forgive the term, blue cluster. This one seems to have more clusters, so I'm splitting it off into three so that the clusters are distinct we continue subdividing the clusters. Eventually, we will reach the point where each cluster only contains a single data point. These represent the leaves of our tree. There are other methods of categorizing clusterings. One of these is whether the clustering is exclusive or overlapping. The clustering shown in my examples so far is exclusive. Each data object belongs to one cluster and only one cluster. Let's take a minute to look at overlapping clustering. I'm going to add a new data object to show what I mean. This object could belong to the blue cluster or to the pink cluster. When clusters can overlap, a single object can belong to multiple clusters at the same time. It is also possible to have what is called fuzzy clustering. All objects are part of all clusters with a membership weight that is between zero and one. This score states the level to which the object belongs to that cluster. Zero meaning that the object does not belong at all, one meaning that the object totally belongs. The last classification of clustering we will be discussing in this video is whether the clustering is complete or partial. In complete clustering, which is what we have been doing so far, Every object in the system is assigned to a cluster. In partial clustering, some objects are not assigned to clusters. This is done because 
At times, there are objects that simply do not belong to well-defined clusters. Outliers, errors, things like that. This keeps us from distorting our clusters with background noise. Now that we've talked a bit about what clusters are and about the different types of clusterings, we can talk about how they are made. There are many different algorithms that are used to make clusters. Because of length, these algorithms will be split off into other videos in this series. Please subscribe or keep checking back for part two, single link. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps you in your study of clustering. Thank you.